Like, how did you go to college and lose to an old man in beer pong? You just spent four years in college. You, you had more experience, though. Right? I'm just, it's, you know what it is? A lot of people use the wrist, and it's oh, the elbow. There we go. It's take, the elbow. Take. That's the I key. I can't do beer pong. Don't use the wrist. People try to do the wrist, and that it, the elbow is the key. Be more like a Dirk Nowitzki high up, or more like oh. a Kobe line drive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just like. A little more Dirk. Okay, a little, a little more Dirk. A little yeah. more Dirk, and honestly, honestly, it's a it's a little Raleigh fingers, too, because if you spin it, I'm just, whatever. Crouch. It's a, I, whatever. <laughs> Look, I'm wearing strategy. a t-shirt, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Jay Croucher. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. It's noon on a Thursday on Peacock, but it is 5 o'clock somewhere. He's Jay Croucher. I'm Matthew Berry, and welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. Jay Croucher, you don't get to wear the shirt unless you're the champion. I sent the clip of me talking about my beer pong, beer pong prowess. Yes. To the neighborhood yesterday. It was a whole text chain, very spirited text chain about that. But the fact of the matter is, is two years running, me and John Mendez have taken on all comers, and all comers have gone away losers. Okay. We need to get uh, Blake from research onto uh, your kind of history of beer pong and kind of validate. I need a results sheet. I want some video as well. I want to see this Dirk Nowitzki high up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, the there, German there in some, your shot. There have been some complaints that the elbow goes over the table a little <laughs> yeah, bit. I'll I can see that. You. It's, I'm not so, I'll be honest. Listen, I'm, yeah, I'm six foot in. one. You know, I got I got long arms. I got long reach. Everyone knows about that. You got um, long reach. Hey, right. it's love hate day. It's love hate day. Uh, don't love the game on tonight, but it, <laughs> there is, there's a fair bit going on. As your shirt references there, make Carson Wentz great again. Certainly needed because he's not great right now. He certainly is not. They're, Ron Rivera sent me this shirt. Yeah, I can imagine. Look, I think like right. Truth of the matter is, is J.P. Finley, our, our colleague here at uh, NBC Sports, he does a great job covering the uh, Washington Commanders for NBC Sports in Washington. He actually sent me the shirt. Yeah. But he probably got it from Ron. Yeah, Ron I'd say probably so. said, hey, hand these out to a bunch of people if you can. A lot of people are making the joke, particularly after last week's game, that, you know, tonight is the night to really spend time with your family yeah something like that everyone making that gag is watching bears commanders it's football uh it's going to be great i think this game might be a bit more interesting than people anticipate there's a little bit going on i do i, I do too because both teams backs are against the wall you have two really desperate teams and so when when you have two desperate teams interesting things can happen we'll get into that game uh, coming up we in will. a little bit, but, but first, Roto World headlines. Let's jump Roto into World it. Headlines. And the first one is Kyle Pitts, and then we talk about consistently. He returns to practice from his hamstring injury. He's now expected to play Sunday. Are you just starting Kyle Pitts across the board? I'm not. I wow. mean, first off, I need a new T-shirt that says "Make Kyle Pitts Great." I, I would For say again, time. but yeah. he hadn't been great, right? I mean, like we're, no. we're still waiting, Arthur Smith. We're still waiting. Jay, for the season, Kyle Pitts is tight end 23, mm. right? He's had one game, one game this entire season where he's had more than two receptions and more than 25 receiving yards. Last week was his best game of the year, and I'll tell you why. I mean, he got a zero. It was his fourth game with single-digit fantasy points out of five this year. But the exciting thing about last week was he, he was ruled out before the game. I know. So you knew to bench him before the game as opposed to every other week when you find out on Monday – Oh, I should have benched him. Yes. America's Nightmare was briefly put on pause for one week. I still think you have to start him. Like, he still is a guy who had 23-point games back-to-back last year. The talent hasn't gone anywhere. And the big thing is the Falcons, they've, like we talked about yesterday, they've covered all five yeah. of their games. They're the only team in the league that has done that. And eventually they're going to get into a game script where they have to throw the ball. And this Niners defense is scary, but Manuel Mosley's done for the year. Nick Bosa is in some doubt. You might be able to throw a little bit on the Niners, and they might be in a position where they have to throw. And also it's still Kyle Pitts. Right, I mean, they, they may have throw, you know, like whatever. Hey, hey, Kyle Pitts, can you block? We're going to scheme Kaderil Hodge open, yeah. you know. Um, uh, you know, Zacchaeus, you know, we're going to try to get him deep for one or two, you know, uh, run Drake London on some decoys. The fact is, Jay, is that, yes, the Niners defense is a little bit banged up here. And you're probably right. You probably have to start Kyle Pitts because you likely don't have a better option than him. I will say he came in at 10 in my initial ranks, which is for a guy that was drafted in the third round um, and the third overall tight end in every fantasy league, that's really low. It's the lowest I've ranked him all year. 
49ers have allowed the second fewest receiving yards to opposing tight ends. They've given up the third fewest fantasy points to opposing tight ends. No tight end has scored a touchdown yet against the Niners. So even if they're a little bit banged up, it's still, this is not a good matchup for Kyle Pitts. Yep. Uh, lower expectations. He is now in the, you're hoping for a touchdown tight end, you know, range, which is fine. A lot of tight ends are in that, like, you, you hope for a touchdown, but not that you had to spend a third round pick on. Yep. Okay, let's move on to Tyrion Davis Price, who's had the ankle injury. He got in a full practice on Wednesday. Any concern about Jeff Wilson's workload? If TDP is able to go, they elevate Tevin Coleman to the active roster as well. Yeah, I mean, maybe Coleman is, is, is more of the concern here, but Jeff Wilson Jr. has done nothing to say, hey, we should get somebody else in there. You know, maybe, honestly, Devo Samuel didn't have a ton of carries. You know, so maybe that hurts his game a little bit. And so, you know, listen, they, they killed Carolina last week. Yeah. So I don't know how much you can take away from that. What I can tell you is that over the last three games, Jeff Wilson Jr. has averaged 75% of the Niners running back touches. He's had over 100 yards from scrimmage in three of the last four. He's averaging almost 18 touches a game since Elijah Mitchell went down in week one. So week two on. You're talking about 18 touches a game, basically, is what Wilson's. So, no, I'm not worried about TDP, you know, stealing touches from Wilson. Again, this might be more of a, uh, you know, take a touch or two away from Debo Samuel in the backfield or Tevin Coleman. Yep. Like I said, nine is five and a half point favorites. And Kyle Shanahan is the type of coach where he does not want to put a lead in Jimmy Garoppolo's hands. They just run the ball. They run the ball repeatedly when they're playing like a lead, like we think they will be. Now, James Connor, uh, who's got the rib injury, he's considered day to day. So what we're do you make? All day to day. Yeah, the old is. Dan Patrick line. You yes. know, yeah. We are all day to day. We're so all what do you, day to day. What do you make of Eno Benjamin with a chance to lead this Cardinals backfield? I think he's an interesting flyer. Like I picked him up in a couple of leagues where there wasn't like an obvious, you know, pickup. Like you know, Kenneth Walker's roster and everything like that. So I grabbed Eno Benjamin because let's see, right? I, what I think is interesting here is that the Cardinals signed both Corey Clement and Tyson Williams to their practice squad. And like, that's a lot of running back depth if all your guys are healthy. What that tells me is that Daryl Williams definitely doesn't look that great. And Connor, James Connor, the news came out yesterday that he's day-to-day. -day, but does that mean he starts? Does it mean he gets a full workload? Eno Benjamin's had at least 45 yards from scrimmage and four targets in four out of the five games this year. I expect him to get at least that, if not a bigger workload, against the Seahawks defense that has allowed over 100 yards to scrimmage 100 yards from scrimmage to every running back they faced this year. Yep. Um, every single running back they faced this year, in every game, I, let me rephrase that. In every game they've played, at least one running back has had over 100 yards from scrimmage. And so it's a really good matchup against Seattle. I do think Eno Benjamin might be flex worthy, even if Connor is active. And there's a chance that Connor misses this game as well, especially given his injury as well. By the way, watch the timing on this game it's a weird one because yeah, if the, the mariners, mariners if the seattle mariners force a game four the this game will be moved back to five o'clock and so you know hopefully we get some news reports you know midnight early sunday morning that says yes connor's good to go or he's going to be ruled out but just understand that as you start thinking about that game whether you're going to start benjamin or if you have connor or if you have both that there's a chance you might you might be looking at a five o'clock start time Eastern time. Yeah, let's uh, let's hope Framber Valdez gets it done on the mound for the Astros. We don't have to deal with this Mariners situation. I yeah. think the, the Seahawks, they give up the most rushing yards in the league. Weirdly, Seattle, which would not have been predictable preseason, they've become the best fantasy team in the league yeah. both ways because they just give up so many yards and Geno's been so good and we'll get to him. But firstly, some bit. more running yeah, backs. Come on, Astros. Just look, you are the cheat. Can you just cheat one more time to get rid of the Mariners so we can have our football on time? That's all we're asking. Ed, you're just done. cheat one more time. You're already everyone already knows you guys are cheaters. So let's just you why know, not? Why not one more time? Why not one more time? Two more wins. Houston. All right, Brees Hall. He makes the love list. He broke out 197 yards from scrimmage, touchdown, two yards away from Who's two more touchdowns. Who's the worst cheater, touchdowns. by the way? Have you, did you see this story that, that the guys who – there's these guys in Ohio. Hang on for <laughs> one second. There's these guys in Ohio, swear to God, that they're in a fishing tournament, and it's for yeah. a lot of money, and they put lead weights in the fish to make them weigh higher. Right, and there's a viral video of like other fishermen calling them out, and like it's total scumbags. These guys that waited down the fish, um, and now there's chances, I guess, that they're going to get like charges draw brought up against them um, uh, for you know for theft because they were trying to steal the money of the prize money. Anyway, who's a bigger cheater? Is my question to you. Is the fish the Ohio fishermen? <laughs> yeah. 
or the Houston Astros? I think the thing with the Houston Astros is that it was such unimpressive cheating. They were banging trash cans. Right. It's the 21st century. Uh, exactly. There's so much technology. Jose Atube, <laughs> yeah. don't touch my buzzer <laughs> yeah. as he, he rounds bases. It's unbelievable. So you, you think they were fishermen. the worst cheaters because they were, weren't clever enough? Yes, because they were worse at cheating. They that were makes worse them at cheating. They were bad cheaters. Because the, the fish guys apparently got away with this for quite yeah. some time. It took a while before people, uh, you know, figured out that they were just, you know, shoving some, you know, uh, lead pellets down these uh, these fish's gullets. You, you played tennis growing up, right? I did, yeah. Yeah, so when you had to, like, call your own balls in or out, like when you are a kid growing up, you kind of, you know, the ball slightly got the edge of the line, you call it out? No, I will tell you, I will tell you a true story. Because um, I was really, I was a really frustrating player to play because I wasn't, like, overpowering. Yeah. I was one of those kids, you hit it 15 times, I got it 16 times. You yeah. could do it 18, like a junk ball pitcher. Like Leighton like, Hewitt. Yeah, like just literally, like all I did was, all I did was just get the ball back. But I was super consistent. And so like I would drive people crazy. And it was just like, like a batter who strikes out four times. It's like, that guy doesn't have any junk. Yeah. Like guys, he's thrown nothing but junk. That guy has no actual stuff. Like it's, I'm swinging at like 85 mile curveballs. So like people would get really frustrated playing me because like it was all unforced errors. Yep. And so I would get accused of like, call you know they're like well that was it and, and so sometimes in that happened you could get somebody from the the kit the tournament to come and call lines oh no and no it was great because what would happen is when they did that then i'm like okay now it's on and i would just destroy them right then like i was no listen i was like i was ranked in the state of texas i like my i was the number one singles player on my high school team that finished third in the state of texas texas big state it's and a big play, state and you play, a lot of good tennis is played there because you can play year round so i'm just saying like Back in the day, um, and so, yeah, and, and so it was always worse for them after, once it, quote, got called fair. Oh, no. You know, then it became I Matthew Barry's the, destruction well, well, they, now, you're t now you're questioning my integrity, and <laughs> F you. And so then, like, it, it kicked it up another level, and then they never won a game after that. Okay. Well, another, and then they were like, and they were like oh, I, I, guess, I guess you were calling it fair. Another destruction tour that's going on right now is Brees Hall upon the NFL. I thought and you meant this podcast because <laughs> we're way off the rails. Yeah, we've already destroyed this. So why do you love Brees Hall this week? You think he's the guy going forward in that backfield? He has been. He has been. I mean, he's had back-to-back -back games with over 19 touches, Jay. Three straight games with 15 or more fantasy points. He's averaging over 42 receiving yards per game, which is the second most among running backs as well. And you love this matchup against the Green Bay Packers defense that is coming back from London, right? I, I don't love teams that don't get the buy off of the London game. They're coming off of a bad loss to London, and they allow 5.1 yards per carry to opposing running backs. That's the fifth most in the NFL. Their bottom 12 run defense on the season. Even in, you know, we, we think about that, that Chicago game. Everyone in the universe knew Jason, Justin Fields wasn't throwing. Yep. And still Dave Montgomery was able to run on them in negative game script. So, yeah, Brees Hall, who has, you know, been as advertised, if not better, from coming out of college, he's been the guy for the Jets. He makes the love list as well. I have him as a top eight play this week. Yep, I like that. He's plus 500 and favorite on BetMGM for Offensive Rookie of the Year. I think he should be favorite. I think plus 500 is even too big. I think it should be more like plus 350. Now, another guy who That's was good bet who, who gashed the Packers, or at least was part of a run offense that did, was Ramondre Stevenson a couple weeks ago. He makes the love list playing at Cleveland. Yeah, look, so Damian Harris is out. We talked about this yesterday on the show as well with, with Julie. When Ramondre Stevenson gets time, when he gets work, when he gets snaps, the dude rocks, man. Six career games with 15 or more touches. He's had over 100 yards in four of them. He's averaging over 16 fantasy points per game in those games, including last week, where, as you see on your screen, 27 touches for 175 total yards. Ramondre Stevenson not only is going to get a ton of work here as Damian Harris isn't going to play. He's got that hamstring injury. Ty Montgomery's not going to play as well. So maybe it's Pierre Strong. Like you see, you'll see a couple of guys mixed in, but it's mostly going to be Ramondre Stevenson against the Browns team. That's allowed the fourth most rushing yards to opposing running back so far. The second most rushing touchdowns. They've given up over almost six yards per carry to the position. Ramondre Stevenson is a top 10 play this week as well. Yep. I think while Damian Harris is out, I think Saquon is clearly the number one back in fantasy. I think Ramondre Stevenson has a chance to be number two, though. He has that kind of ceiling because they just... Even He's when super Mac talented. Jones, even when Mac Jones is back, they still run the ball religiously. A lot. A lot. He's a good pass catcher. He doesn't yep. come he off does the field. Everything. He really does everything. Yep. Okay, Raheem Mostert, who is starting to completely take over the Miami backfield. Chase Edmonds is fading away. And Raheem, 
the Dream is on the love list this week. Yeah, Raheem must start. Yeah, now, I prefer Raheem the Dream, but that's okay. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Not your show. <laughs> yeah. um, you could do that on a button. <laughs> yeah. Chris Sims yeah, will like Chris that. Sims. Yeah. yeah, he'll love that. Uh, look, Raheem Mostert, Raheem must start, um, you know, in case anyone's keeping track of the dad jokes. <laughs> um, just go ahead and mark that one down. Here's the thing about here's the thing about Mostert, and I, I should I should note this, and this is important. He missed practice yesterday, Wednesday. He missed practice on Wednesday with oh a boy. knee issue. Given his injury history, that raises a little bit of eyebrows. Now it's Wednesday, so we'll see. And as of this broadcast, we don't know if he's practiced yet today. We'll see. Maybe by the end of the show, we'll get a report on that. So it's something to watch out. So like I wouldn't drop Chase Edmonds just yet. But yes, assuming Raheem Most uh, Mostert is active, he is a must start. He's had a 70% snap share the last two weeks, 36 touches in his last two games, 75% of the Dolphins' goal-to-go touches over that stretch among running backs. He's had over 80 yards from scrimmage. You like the matchup with Minnesota that's allowed over 80 yards from scrimmage to a running back in four out of five games this year. And then you sort of think about how this Dolphins team wants to attack Minnesota. It's going to be Skylar Thompson yep. under center. Tua has returned in a, in a non-contact jersey to do some stuff. I think there's a chance that Teddy Bridgewater might get to practice today as well. But Mike McDaniel has said that, you know, that uh, they're not playing this week. Now, again, that can always change. Maybe yep. he, gets, well, he gets a good look at Skylar Thompson in practice. <laughs> He's just like, ah, well, yeah, Teddy's elbow is not Teddy's, so bad. You know, exactly. He's cleared the concussion protocol. So we'll see. But he, the, the last quote I saw was that, Right now, the expectation is Skylar Thompson is under center for Miami against the Vikings. And so with an inexperienced quarterback like that, you want to re- lean on the run game even more. Good news as long as we're talking about the Dolphins. Full participant in practice yesterday for Tyreek Hill. Yep, Jalen Waddell will play as well by all indications. Now, some others receiving votes. Kenneth Walker against Arizona, J.K. Dobbins at the Giants, and then Eno Benjamin, who we just spoke about at Seattle. Yeah, we talked about Eno Benjamin. So, again, I think he's a viable flex, even if Connor is active. Kenneth Walker, yeah, I mean, like, I don't – I don't think there was a fantasy website or analyst out there that didn't scream, go get Kenneth Walker this week. We were all on the same page here. He was available in about half the leagues. And if you were lucky enough to have already rostered him or if you were one of those leagues where he wasn't rostered and you managed to get him, you are happy and you're immediately putting him into your lineup. 83% of the snaps after Rashad Penny went down. As we've talked about, the Seahawks average 21 running back touches per week. I, I have him as a top 16 play this week. And Dobbins continues to get more and more work as he works his back works his way back from injury. Giants have allowed over 75 scrimmage yards to a running back in every single game this year. Dobbins should lead the backfield for the Baltimore Ravens. If you had Brees Hall, would you trade him for Kenneth Walker? Because Kenneth Walker is in a better offense and he has probably less competition, but it's all Brees at the moment because of that game last week. Do you think that there's a chance that Kenneth Walker is the best rookie running back going forward? Obviously not forgetting Damian Pierce as well. Yeah, I don't mind that as well. I mean, I, I, uh, I don't have a problem with that trade. Yep. And I think you could probably get that trade. I think 95% of people would do that. I'm right. not sure they should. In terms of I would I might rather you, have Kenneth Walker. Right. Oh, yep. I would say what you're saying. Yeah. I know um, that they would not, 95% of the people would not want to trade yep. away Brees Hall. Yep. I think it's close, yep. which, by the way, just gives you an idea of how excited we are about Kenneth Walker. But yep. I, said this, I said this when Penny went down. I've said this all week. I'm not the only one to say this. But Kenneth Walker legitimately has a chance to be a league winner this week, this year. Now, a guy that people drafted hoping he would be a league winner was Najee Harris, who was a top 10 pick across the board. Not playing like it. Yeah, I'd much rather have Kenneth Walker than Najee Harris the rest of the way, I think. And so, hate list, Najee Harris is on it. Yeah, by the way, I agree with you. And I think that that's a trade that could get done. Yes, definitely. So, something to think about there. He's had one game, right? It, 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 my article, by the way, my love-hate article that's out now and is 100% free on rotorworld.com, on NBCSportsEdge.com, of course, I'm a company man, uh, is all about trade etiquette, all about how to negotiate, the art of negotiation and trades. It's, a, it's my definitive. It's the, it's the seven habits of highly effective traders. Yep. Um, and so go check it out right now. And so this is the week that I feel like you have – a, a decent enough data set, right? You know, most playoffs start in week 15. We're through five weeks of the NFL season. So with a caveat that the entire football season is basically a small sample size, I think we have enough of a sample size. We have a third of a season done before the playoffs start. This is when you should know, like, okay, I know what I need and what I, what I have and what I don't have on my roster. This is the week to start making some trades. And Najee Harris is somebody that makes the hate list. I wouldn't mind trading him away. He's, 
He's got 64 receiving yards through five games. That's 39th among running backs. He's got less receiving yards than Kyle Juszczyk. He's got least, less receiving yards than Craig Reynolds, third string running back Craig Reynolds in the Lions. I mean, like, he's just not getting any passing game usage, Jay. So that means what he needs to do is get into the end zone. Well, he's only had two touchdowns, and he needs to get insane volume. And unfortunately, Jalen uh, Jalen Warren is cutting into it. I throw out last week because they were blown out, and you know, uh, blown out especially in the second half. But still, you look at those numbers on your screen. He's had two games this year where he's had better than 10.7 fantasy points, which is not what you expect when you draft somebody number one overall. He's had the only run. And so you add all that up to the fact that now he plays, um, now he plays, you know, a tough matchup, right? I mean, like, this is not a matchup that you absolutely love against Tampa Bay, right? I mean, like, you know, like. It's a, it, they haven't been the run defense they were last year, but it's still an elite rush. It still should be an elite rushing defense going forward. So not a lot to love about Najee Harris. I think he's like the seminal reluctant flex at the moment where you still have to play him. You just don't feel good about it. You just kind of you're, stick him there and hope right. that it You're hoping he falls into the end zone because yep. like, he's not going to be able to the passing game. So you hope Pittsburgh can keep it close enough with Tampa Bay that they give him the volume that he needs. He's had one game this year with over 75 yards from scrimmage as we've talked about yep. here. Like, now, just... A familiar name on the hate list. Good to see him back here. I know it's, we were negative, but it still makes more sense when Clyde edwards Elaire is on the hate list. He's had fewer than 10 carries in four of five games. Been very touchdown dependent. Yeah. And you don't think he's going to perform. Yeah, of course, the one one game that he had more than 12 care, more than 10 carries was the game that I went on national TV and said, hey, I'm taking the under on nine and a half carries for Clyde edwards Elaire," And that's the one game, of course, that he went over. He's just been so touchdown dependent. I mean, like, again, he's not getting a ton of work, as you said, under 10 carries in four out of five games this year. He is not getting a ton of work, and yet he's scoring all these touchdowns. His five touchdowns account for 42% of his fantasy points. That's just a massive amount. Um, it's not a great matchup with Buffalo. Bills have allowed the fewest rushing yards to running backs this season. They allow the second fewest yards per carry to opposing running backs so far this year. Um, I just I don't love Clyde edwards Lair. It's worth noting that last week when the Chiefs got down pretty big to the Raiders and had to catch up, Jarek McKinnon actually played more snaps than CEH uh, last week. And so certainly you would think that in this game against a, you know, potent Bills offense, there's a chance that happens again, that they get down by 10 points, 17 points, and all of a sudden it's a lot more Jarek McKinnon. Clyde edwards Elaire comes in for me at uh, running back 26 this week. So mid-tier flex, and ideally you're using a wide receiver there. Yep. Bills are minus three in Kansas City. And the way to think about how crazy that is is that home field is worth one and a half points. So if this game was in Buffalo, they're saying Patrick Mahomes would be a six-point underdog, which I'm going to say it's just never happened. I know it's never happened. So uh, pretty crazy that uh, KC at home three-point dogs to the Bills, but at the same feels time... Like they're, feels like they're begging you to take Kansas City. That's what they want you to do. Yes. They're begging you to take Kansas Patrick City. Patrick Mahomes is incredible as an underdog. It doesn't happen too often. All right, right. Ezekiel Elliott, another underdog uh, in a big game against Philadelphia. Dallas now six-point dogs. We talked about how we liked Philly minus five yesterday. It's already minus six on BetMGM. Yeah. And, uh, Ezekiel Are you moving Elliott. markets, Jay Croucher, by yourself? Is that what's happening? Right there. Yeah. Big, massive audience for the happy hour that just heard People you say that. People pile, pile in. pile in. We're on They'll the Eagles bandwagon. In. Well, listen. Well, I appreciate that. Well, well, if you go to Bad MGM, use promo code Barry, all I'm saying. All right. So, anyway, yes. They are, they are almost a touchdown underdog here. Ezekiel Elliott does make the hate list, as we talked about a little bit yesterday. Comes in at running back 27 for me. He's had one game this year with over 80 scrimmage yards. Under Similar to Najee Harris, right? Just the, the passing game usage hasn't been there He's had under five receiving yards. Not a typo. Unbelievable. Under five receiving yards in four out of five games this year. He's only one game where he's had multiple catches. And I hate this matchup, right? So now you're like, okay, so he's not getting passing game usage. So he needs volume and touchdown equity. Well, the volume's not going to be there because Tony Pollard's getting some run as well. So now you're hoping he gets into the end zone. And that could always happen. You never know. It's, It's fluky. It's worth noting that the Eagles... A really, really good run defense. There's one running back. One running back so far this year through five games to reach 65 scrimmage yards yeah. against the Eagles. Like, that's not even that high a bar to clear. And yet only one guy is in it was DeAndre Swift, who's a much more 
a dynamic player than Ezekiel Elliott at the respective places of their careers right now. So, I don't know. Teams facing the Eagles this year are averaging 17 running back touches a game. That's lowest in the NFL. So you're like, okay, they're getting 17 touches against these Eagles, and we know Pollard's probably getting like at least eight to ten of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, I probably like probably more like eight, six to eight. So I don't know. I I don't know. He's I'm ideally you are not using Ezekiel. I think better days are ahead for him, especially once Dak comes back. But ideally, you're not using Ezekiel Elliott yep. this week. Okay. When we come back. Pass catcher, love, hate, yeah. receivers, some tight ends. Logan Thomas not on this list, right? I'll figure out a way to get him in. Will it feel different? It's not just college, I mean, it's home. It shouldn't feel no different. It's another game. I'm just playing at home, you know, in front of my family and friends. That's all. Um, it's exciting to play in front of those guys. That's why I, uh, emotions can be high. That's about it. Louisiana food. I'm sure it's not like beignets for you or certain something that you have to get when you're in Louisiana. Um, I'm going to get a voodoo roll. Like stuff with shrimp, crawfish roll, and other sauce. So. All right. We are back on Love Hate Thursday. Yeah, a lot of hard hitting questions there. Yeah. Some top notch journalists there in New Orleans. Indeed. Or in Cincinnati. Yeah. Uh, asking Jamar Chase, that's whose voice you just heard, asking Jamar Chase, uh, what are you going to order when you go back home to Louisiana? The tough questions. I can also confirm to the viewers and listeners that Matthew just spent the two minute break confirming to me that he was actually an incredible tennis player and likened himself to. Bob Nepper, uh, who in Major League Baseball was the 1981 NL Comeback Player of the Year. So, shout Bob out. Nepper was like just a junk pitcher. Like he was just a guy that, like you know, like, like I said, like, like I, was the, I was the equi- R, yeah, R, a perfect example. I, you know, um, I was the I was the equivalent of a guy that, like, you're like, well, this guy's he's got the worst stuff out there. Yeah. And then you look up and he's gone seven and two thirds. Yep. He's given up three hits, yep. one walk, and zero earned runs. Like. Like everyone would, they would play me, and they'd be like, "You're not any good. Like you just push it. Like no, no big serve, no yep. nothing." And then you look up, and you're like, oh, "I just won six two six one." And six, like six out of ten of everything, ten out of ten for Kobe mentality. I and totally. Just, just I was. I was. Uh, yeah, I had the Mamba mentality before yeah. before it existed. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's jump into love hate. Jamar Chase, who we've heard from. He is on the love list, despite being maybe the most underwhelming top wide receiver pick. It's been a little bit disappointing. You know, he's, I think he's wide receiver 16 on the season. So he's been fine. That's okay. But he's not, he, you drafted him as a top three guy. And you, yep. you certainly wish you had Stefan Diggs or Debo or some of the other guys that went a little bit after him. He's going back to Louisiana. So that was the, the you know, they just talked to him as, as locker and the hard hitting questions. Like, yeah. what are you going to order? <laughs> like, like, at that point, just hang up your journalism degree. What are you doing? At that point, just, I got Come nothing. On. Come on. <laughs> At that point, whoever asked that question, like, what are we doing? What, what are we, we doing? Like, well, you know, you got 10 minutes in front of the, his, the guy's locker after practice. <laughs> Could you ask anything? Yeah. You know. What about food? Anyway, yeah. yo, what kind of food? Where are you going to go? You know, voodoo rolls, right? Voodoo Whatever. Rolls. I don't know what that is. Um, at any rate, he is going back to Louisiana, obviously. He played his college ball at LSU with Joe Burrow, so a homecoming for both of them. Um, uh, and LSU and Baton Rouge, not New Orleans, but it's all the state of Louisiana. I just want... I don't want the. <laughs> yeah, I don't want someone the, comes at you. For that. Well, just you, there's grammar police and then there's geography police. Yeah. There's a lot of police on Twitter. Yeah. On the Twitter, so I just want everyone to be aware that I I know where LSU is. Uh, and I will say that I think this is a good match. The Saints overall have a pretty good defense, but you can beat them deep, Jay. No team. Oh, only one team in the NFL has allowed more deep passes than the New Orleans Saints this year. They've allowed the fifth most deep receptions to opposing, uh, opposing wide receivers as well. They give up 14.3 yards per reception. That's fifth most in the NFL. Overall, they've given up the eighth most yards to wide receivers. You think about what DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett did to them last week. Three touchdowns, 192 yards. And, and so Jamar Chase, who comes in here, and the other thing is, by the way, Marshawn Lattimore missed practice yesterday for the Saints. He's, he's either going to be less than 100% healthy or he's going to miss this game, which would certainly be a boon to the fantasy prospects of Jamar Chase, especially, by the way, if T. Higgins is less than 100%, which sort of still seems like he is. Yep. So it sounds like you're buying low on Chase. Now's the time to put in a trade offer for him. 
Because I think that with Chase, like teams have adjusted like their shading safeties over more to him. But yeah. at some point, like talent is just unguardable. And there's too many other guys on that team where they're going to figure it out at some point. Quarterback's too good. He's too good. And like you said, Saints have been bad against deep passes. Yeah. They're missing Marcus Williams. Lattimore, even if he does play, hasn't been up to his usual standard. So uh, Bengals two-point favorites in that game. Uh, so the mark is expecting they'll turn it around a little bit in New Orleans. Now, Marquise Brown, who is seeing Cooper Cup type volumes, averaging 12 targets per game the past month, and he's on the love list, like many people will be against the Seahawks. To your point, 55 targets this season. That's tied for the second so, most among wide receivers, Jay. Through six games, I'm sorry, through five games, through five games, I think people would be surprised to learn that Marquise Brown is the seventh best wide receiver in fantasy football. Yeah. He's now had three straight games with over 20 fantasy points. Doesn't feel like anyone's talking about him, sort of weirdly under the radar for a guy that has been that good and that productive. Double digit targets now in four straight games. And the reason we mention the targets, and we keep harping on how many targets he's getting, is that wide receivers that have faced the Seahawks and have gotten at least six targets are averaging 15 and a half fantasy points per game. Marquise Brown is a top six wide receiver for me this week. Remember, last week before DeAndre Hopkins shows back up. Yep, I was just going to say, I think now is the time to trade Marquise Brown. Maybe there's someone in your league who's not paying that much attention, who's just kind of forgotten about the existence of DeAndre Hopkins, yep. who's just about to come back uh, and is going to. He's not going to average 12 targets a game the rest of the season. By the way, I also think this is, as I kick the sign here, I just stretched <laughs> out my leg. Uh, I also think this is a time to trade DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, I sure. think his perceived value is higher than what it actually will be. Yep. So right now, like, hey, he's coming back next week. Oh, DeAndre Hopkins. Like, there's a chance DeAndre Hopkins is like a rich man's version of Allen Robinson. Wow. Like, he's slow. Wow. Like, by the, and the, I mean, like, his, I mean by this what I mean by this. No, no, no. I love DeAndre Hopkins, one of my favorite players in the NFL. I love DeAndre Hopkins. All I'm saying is, is that he – he was he's for to to he slowed down last year towards the end of the he year. He did. He did. He, was on he the same slowed path. down to this Arizona offense is not clicking on all cylinders, and maybe DeAndre Hopkins shows up and it all gets better, or maybe there's just real flaws with Kingsbury's system here. And so I'm just saying that DeAndre Hopkins is probably going to be a you know given how much they spread the ball around. DeAndre Hopkins is probably going to be like a fine wide receiver too. Yeah. Last year he was really touchdown dependent. But his perception is kind of like as a top five fantasy wide receiver. Yep. And I don't know that he's going to be, given Ertz and Hollywood Brown, and they want to get Rondell Moore involved and the offense doesn't look great. Like, I think he's he's more wide receiver two than wide receiver one. And that's what I meant by the Al Robinson thing, just like that the expectations won't meet the production. Yep. Just everyone, I think, in the that's fantasy world. rich just, man's. Yes. Yeah, good caveat. So I think everyone just freaks out when they hear the name Alan Robinson. Uh, triggers bad, bad flashbacks to everything he's done this year. Oh I do God. think that DeAndre Hopkins, I think Marquise Brown is clearly the guy you'd want in Arizona over Hopkins. I think some people might still the name of DeAndre yeah. Hopkins triggers you know the thought that he's in that Justin Jefferson Cooper Cup tier which he's clearly a long way from now Tyler Lockett another guy in that game he's had a minimum of 76 receiving yards four weeks in a row he's kind of become the guy for Geno Smith the suddenly elite Geno Smith and he's on the love list against Arizona yeah I mean through the last four weeks he's the seventh best wide receiver in fantasy he's averaging 19.2 fantasy points per game over that stretch at least five receptions, at least 75 yards in every single game over the last four. And matchup-wise, Arizona can't stop anyone, I mean, right? I mean, the, the, the Cardinals are um, uh, bottom 12 in the NFL in terms of pass defense so far this year. Last season, he absolutely murdered them. 21.3 fantasy points per game in two games against the Cardinals last year with at least 95 yards in both games. So... Yeah, give me, uh, give me Tyler Lockett as a top 15 play this week. He comes in at wide receiver 13 in my ranks. Okay, next guy is Gabe Davis, who uh, for anyone who vaguely follows football will know that he had quite a game. And, uh, and you called it. How, how do you feel when, uh, when you get one of those right? Do you uh, feel, is it relief? Is it like, I'm Keith Hernandez? Is yeah, it that kind of vibe? It's a little bit of both. It's yeah. a little bit of both. It's, it's a little bit of gloating, but it's also a little bit of relief. Okay. And it's also like, oh, I hope they remember that call and <laughs> yeah. not, the, not the crappy one I made 10 minutes before yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, Gabriel Davis, like we've seen him have success against the Kansas City Chiefs. We go back to that playoff game, obviously, where he had the master game, as you mentioned, right? But the usage has been there for him. 
He's played a 95% of snaps in three out of four games. That the last week's blowout it was the one game that he didn't. And hey, now what? Just while I'm talking, got an alert on the Fantasy Life app. Raheem Mostert, Durham Smythe, back practicing at Dolphins Thursday. There practice. you go. There Fire him up. Yeah. Fire up Raheem the Dream. I, I don't think Durham Smythe is necessary to to grab, but good to know that Mostert is. Uh, uh, practicing in full, it appears. Anyway, my point is, is on Game Davis. We we know the talent is there. We saw it last week. You know the the two great catches in the long runs. He had three catches overall. Uh, we've seen it um, uh, previously as well in the playoff game last year against the Chiefs. What are we expecting this week against um, Kansas City once again? Worth noting, Chiefs have allowed seven touchdowns to wide receiver. That's tied for the third most in the NFL. Yep. Yep, I think that Gabe Davis, certainly, uh, there were a lot of reasons the previous two, three weeks. There were a lot of caveats. There was the weather in Baltimore. The Miami game was weird where they were selling out to stop the receivers. So Devin Singletary went off. I think he can safely fire up Gabe Davis probably for the rest of the season and certainly for this week. Now, Chiefs have allowed the fifth most receptions to opposing wide receivers yep. as well. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of points in that game. Yeah. Uh, we saw what happened in the playoffs. Those teams cannot stop each other they're both just defense agnostic all right zach Ertz at Hopefully. seattle he's had a minimum of six receptions in four straight games and uh he's kind of become in your uh, your stable of guys who's just frequently on this list every week maybe i keep hoping that he'll, he'll sort of break through and make it he makes the love list this week because not only has he been you know really good this year he's had multiple red zone targets in four out of five games this year so i think he gets in the end zone here i like him as a anytime touchdown bet and I certainly like him against Seattle, as the Seahawks have allowed the most yards to opposing tight ends. You know, like, like they just give it up. Start your tight ends against the Se Seahawks. Yeah. The, the Detroit Lions looked like they were going to be the fantasy team, just both sides, and uh, they didn't want it, and so now it is Seattle. All right, some others receiving votes. We've got Christian Kirk, Gobi Myers, Curtis Samuel, George, a couple of Georges, Pickens and Kittle, and then Hayden Hurst. So... I'll just mention Kirk real quick, uh, who had two touchdowns in week two against uh, New Orleans. Against the Colts. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, against uh, what I was saying, New Orleans. Sorry. Um, yeah, Christian Kirk, uh, Christian Kirk had the big game in week two against the Colts, right? He had the two touchdown passes. Colts struggle against the slot. They allow the fifth most yards after the catch per reception to the slot. So Kirk comes in as a top 20 play for me this week. Jacoby Myers, as we've talked about, this is, again, one of those ones that would surprise you. So far this year, he's the eighth best wide receiver in fantasy on a points-per-game basis, averaging nine targets a game. So there's a nice floor there with Jacoby Myers. With no, uh, no Jahan Dotson tonight, we're going to talk about this game in a little bit, but Curtis Samuel, I think, is somebody that I do think is worthy of starting. Uh, he's had six or more receptions in four out of five games this year, leads the team in target share at 22%. And finally, we keep waiting for a George Kittle breakout game. I think this is it. If okay. it's not this, yeah, if it's not this, then we're trading George Kittle and we're just like, if he can't get it done against the Falcons, that is bottom three in the NFL in terms of most receptions and yards allowed to opposing tight ends, then I don't know what to tell you. Yep. Like, it, So I think it's a George Kittle week here uh, for, uh, for pass catchers. Yeah, I think if he doesn't play well this week, I think that's the time to trade George Kittle because he, like DeAndre Hopkins, he still has all of the name brand value yep. of being George Kittle. All right, let's jump into the hate list. First guy is Mike Williams playing against Denver. Yeah, I mean, we're expecting uh, Patrick Sertan to, uh, to shadow him as well. Chance that Keenan Allen comes back, which would limit his target share. And it's worth noting that the Denver Broncos have allowed the second fewest yards to wide receivers this season. They've given up only one touchdown to a wide receiver so far this year. And that's as currently constructed. And if they suddenly get, you know, some... Um, you know, they get some reinforcements here. Um, you know, like, I don't know. It, he makes me nervous. You probably still have to start Mike Williams, Jay. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? I'm at wide receiver 20. But given how productive he's been recently, like, that's pretty low for me. That is the Mike Williams experience. Yeah. He's going to have those random one reception and, games. And I've been clear about this. If you have Mike Williams on your roster, you just have to start him and close your eyes. And, like, you can't try to guess which is a good week. And yet here I am doing that. But I, I do think it's a... <laughs> I think it's a down week for Mike Williams. I would lower expectations for BMW, Big Mike Williams. Again, yep. you're probably starting him as a high-end flex, low-end wide yep. receiver too. I still think Jalen Ramsey, despite high prof profile failures, is probably the best cornerback in the league, but Patrick Sertan is playing oh, like it terrific. right now. Now, Jerry Judy, 
in that game as well. He is another kind of frequent recurring guest on the, the hate list, and he makes it again. They keep starting him. People keep arguing with me, okay? Like, he's had four or fewer receptions in every game this year. His 48% catch rate is fourth lowest among all wide receivers. So it's like, okay, um, yeah, I mean, you know, what are, we, what are you doing here, right? Right? You know, I mean, he's had four or fewer receptions in every game this year. Hasn't hit 55 yards in a game since week one. Not a lot of touchdown equity here. Oh, by the way, Russell Wilson looks terrible, and apparently he's hurt. So, yeah. uh, Jerry, yeah. Jerry Judy has played 31 games in his career. He's gotten to 80 receiving yards three times three in times. 31 games. And everyone wants to blame it on the quarterbacks, but it's not like Teddy Bridgewater is that bad, and Russell Wilson hasn't been great either, but still Russell Wilson. We All might right. be talking about him next week, next segment on quarterback love hate. You'll never get to which list Russell Wilson is on. Yeah. Back after this. Yeah, hate, minus 500 favorites. Okay, here is where you find the content of the man on my left, Matthew Berry. Uh, obviously, you can watch us on Peacock and at youtube.com slash NFL on NBC on demand. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms. NBC Sports Audio, Channel 85, Sirius XM. You can follow Matthew at Matthew Berry TMR, and you can find all of his written content, NBCSportsEdge.com slash Berry. Yeah, I'm at Matthew Berry TMR on all forms of social media except the Fantasy Life app where I'm merely at Matthew Berry. So if you want to follow me on that, great alerts there on the Fantasy Life app. Go ahead and check that out. Okay, let's jump into some quarterbacks. A guy who I think was and on this way, list. by the way, I would just like to, for people that are listening, like, I, I just want to ask people, like, in all seriousness, we're trying to start a new show here, you know, like the podcast. Like, I'm, I went over, I came over from ESPN. I'm over here. Appreciate everyone that's following me. If you want to support the show, if you want to support me, if you don't like Jay, whatever <laughs> your, whatever your, you know, point of view is, uh, as a favor, I would ask that you go and you you like and subscribe to the podcast and leave a comment, leave a review, leave a five star review. You don't have to mean it. You don't you don't have to mean it. You can just whatever you know, like just leave a five star review, like and comment. You don't ever have to listen to the show. No, we just want the clicks. I'm not above a pity click. I'm not above a pity click. Matthew, everyone pity knows that. Barry, all right. I've said that to my wife many times. I'm not above a pity click. No, we love the pity for clicks. For pity clicks, for the for my podcast. <laughs> That's what clicks. I said to my wife. Yeah. Yeah, pity click. Pity clicks. There you go. All right, let's jump into the love list. Tom Brady, who was on this list last week, I believe, starting to pile up the yards and uh, has a very kind matchup, well, a relatively kind matchup at Pittsburgh. They're big favorites in that game. Yeah, I mean, he was on the love list, made me look smart. He's back on the love list again. 22.6 fantasy points in two games since Mike Evans and Chris Godwin returned. What do you know? You get two, you know, really good wide receivers back, yeah, all of a sudden you, come, you look like Tom Brady again. Both those games he had over 50 passing attempts, over 350 passing yards, and now he gets a Pittsburgh Steelers, a decimated Pittsburgh Steelers team, a team that will be um, honestly struggling to move the ball against Tampa Bay. Steelers, bottom three in the NFL in both passing yards and passing touchdowns allowed this season. They just gave up 424 and four touchdowns to Josh Allen. Not saying Tom Brady's Josh Allen, but he's pretty damn good. I am as a top six quarterback play this week. TB12 is a top six. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Well, well hold on. TB12 <laughs> is T6. Yeah. You just, they're yeah, not all winners, kinda, kids. No, they're not. Men up all nights writing love hate. <laughs> The big, the big thing with Brady is the 52 attempts last week in a game that they were winning the entire time. So he is clearly back to being the, the pass-happy guy that he was last year when he finished QB3 in fantasy. Okay, Geno Smith, uh, another guy who is becoming a recurring guest on the love list. Uh, to me, he is just you just kind of pencil him in as a very startable quarterback each week, and the Arizona matchup is very friendly. So far on this season, Geno Smith is the sixth best quarterback in fantasy. Multiple touchdowns and 17 or more fantasy points in every game this year, but one. He's averaging over 300 passing yards over his last three games, Jay. And you mentioned the Arizona matchup here. This is the second highest uh, over under on the slate per bet MGM. 51 is the last number I saw uh, for this, this matchup. So we expect a lot of points to be scored here. And, and I use, by the way, and I use Geno Smith as the perfect example of, because my whole column this week is all about trades. Yep. And why you should never veto. Don't veto. 
When you veto, it is your way of saying, hey, I'm not good enough to win on the virtual field. This is my way of trying to like circumvent the rules and use like a, you know, a technicality to try to beat you because I can't do it honestly. Everyone should be allowed to coach their team, even if it's badly. Right? I mean, because the, think about this. At the beginning of the year, Jay Croucher. Yes, Matthew Barrett. If you and I were in a league together and I traded you, Ru you know, I traded you Geno Smith for Russell Wilson. Yeah. Everyone would have said, whoa, that's a lopsided trade. You're taking advantage of the dumb Australian. <laughs> right? That's what people in the league would have said. Yeah. And you would have actually looked smart five weeks in because no one wants Russell Wilson and Geno Smith is the sixth best quarterback in fantasy. Right? Exactly. Same thing at the beginning of the year. Hey, I'm going to trade Jared Goff for your Matthew Stafford. And everyone would have been like, whoa, why do you keep taking advantage of the dumb Australian? And I'd be like, because <laughs> he only knows Australian rules football. And I'm like, no, no, no. Trust me, Goff's going to be good this year. And you know what, son of a gun, he is good this year and Stafford isn't. My point is, is that you never, ever know. You could have traded G Geno Smith for Javante Williams in week one, and everyone in the league would have been up in arms. Yes. And yet now you're sitting here, one guy's out for the year, and the other guy's the sixth best quarterback in fantasy. My point is, never, ever, ever veto. You don't know the future. And even if it's a bad trade, it's not your job to coach somebody else's team. Never veto. A lot of passion. I th I'd rather have Geno Smith the rest of the season easily over Matthew Stafford and Russell Wilson. I think there's a case as well over Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr. I think that's in play. All right, Kirk Cousins. So I'd probably rather have Geno Smith than maybe. That's, but that's it's a, close. That's a, but that's, that's, a, close. that's a pick him, yeah. yeah. That's very close. And so he's at Miami. Miami defense has really struggled this year, and so he's on the love list. Yeah, no, no Byron Jones in this one. Uh, Howard's been banged up as well. Dolphins allow the fifth most passing yards this season, right? They're allowing 8.3 yards per pass attempt. That's third highest in the NFL. And Kirk Cousins, as we talked about in the preseason, like Kevin O'Connell wants to throw. He's had at least 38 pass attempts in four straight games. He's had over 270 passing yards in every game this year but one. Kirk Cousins makes the love list. I think he's a top 10 quarterback play this week. Yep. Okay, another couple of guys who have underperformed relative to expectations but are on the love list this week are Aaron Rodgers, home to the Jets, suddenly frisky New York Jets, and Matthew Stafford, home to the uh, not frisky at all Carolina Panthers. Multiple touchdown passes in four straight games for Aaron Rodgers and just a gut call. Losing in London, I, I just think they come back and, like, th this is a game that I just feel like he has to get right here. I'm at QB 13, so I think he's an upper-tier quarterback, too, um, as well. And so, you know, um, Aaron uh, – so you meant – that's Aaron Rodgers. I also just mentioned Trevor Lawrence real quickly yeah, sure. as well. I, I know it's been bad the last two weeks, right? But he faced these Colts in week two, 18.5 fantasy points against them. And then people are like, well, you know, the Colts are so good against opposing quarterbacks. And I'm like, they are. They, they're, you know – Top 10 in terms of fewest fantasy points allowed to opposing quarterbacks. But look at who they faced. Davis Mills, Lawrence in week two, who put up 18 and a half against them. Mahomes, who put up over 18 fantasy points against them. Ryan Tannehill, and then Russell Wilson in that disaster of a Thursday game, not Thursday night game last week, right? So both Lawrence and Mahomes, the two good quarterbacks they faced, the two even decent quarterbacks they faced, yep. both did over 18 fantasy points. I like Trevor Lawrence as a QB2 with upside. He comes in at QB14 for me this week against the Colts. Yep. Nice. And just quickly on Stafford, I do think that he is, he's been a little bit, like everyone thinks he's just rubbish now, but he's not because he's gone up against the 49ers and Cowboys defenses the past two weeks who make him look worse than the Carolina Panthers defense will. Okay, let's yeah, jump and in. And one of the issues with Stafford has been he's been so under pressure, right? Yeah. You know, because and, and, that offensive line stinks. Carolina is 27th in, uh, in sack rate. Yep. So he should have a clean pocket there. I'm as a top 12 play. Back-to-back -back games with 40 or more passing attempts for Matthew Stafford. A guy who has had a lot of clean pockets and it hasn't mattered is Russell Wilson, and he headlines the hate list. Yeah, I mean, the, the truth of the matter is with, with Russell Wilson, right, is, is that, look, think about what he, first off, he's apparently hurt. I don't know yeah. if you saw that, like you the, know, the, the minus five thousand. I mean, cash right, drop. right. It drop was just, cash. it was absolutely like a, a uh, great call here, right? Um, now, listen, a lot of people are saying like, okay, partially tor torn labrum. I hear you. Um, I'm not sure what that has to, what a, la a torn labrum, a partially torn labrum has to do with missing a wide open KJ Hamler at the end <laughs> yeah. of the game. I'm, uh, maybe it like affects your vision. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. But um, I will say this. He's had fewer than 12 fantasy points in three of the past four games. He's had one game this season. One game this season, Jay Croucher, with multiple touchdown passes. Like Chargers, top 10 in the NFL in yards allowed per completion. 
I mean, this is, you know, this is a good defense that's getting healthier. He's just looked bad, right? I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing in this that you've seen from Russ Wilson where you're like, yeah, give me that guy. He's one raid, then abandoned ship at the moment. Yes. I don't know what to, he just looks like a broken umbrella of a quarterback at the moment. All right, sad one to go out with Carson Wentz tonight at the Chicago Bears, the mighty Chicago Bears, but he's on the hate list regardless. Bears have more recept- interceptions this season than touchdown passes allowed. Like, this is a yeah. good defense in Chicago. Um, only two quarterbacks have managed to score more than 17 fantasy points against the Bears, Kirk Cousins and Daniel Jones, and both of them did it because they both had rushing touchdowns. Could Wentz get into the end zone on his own, on his leg? Sure, maybe. But the fact of the matter is, is that there's only two quarterbacks in the NFL that have taken on more sacks than Carson Wentz, who's going to be behind a bad, beat-up offensive line against this Bears defense. No Jahan Dotson, no Logan Thomas in this one. Dimey Brown's a little bit banged up here. It's a Thursday night game. Our friends at BetMGM, we're going to talk about this in a little bit later, but, the, but our, our friends at BetMGM are pretty smart. They've set his line at 218 passing yards. It's very low. Very low. Yeah. So, I'm like, they, they're saying that we think that's the range. Yeah. You know, whether you want to take over or under on that, but they, we're saying 218 yards. So, anyway, all this – Wentz is outside my top 15 um, uh, for, for the week, you know. So, anyway, just there's a lot of negative stats around Carson Wentz. Um, appreciate uh, – we, we had a listener of the podcast, Ron R. from Washington, D.C., send all the negative stats in. So, wherever you are, Ron R., we appreciate – all those negative we'll went stats. That. And uh, good work uh, weaving in Logan Thomas into the segment, even though he's not playing. Good job by you. All right, we're going to go to break. When we come I'm back, like, more I'm telling, on like that tennis. blockbuster. Like, I, I just Commanders, keep it going. Bears. Like, I'm just consistent. Like, it's annoying. Mr. Destruction He'll never tour. get Logan Thomas in. And yet, here I do. I just keep getting Logan Thomas in week, day after day, <laughs> week after week, month after LT. month, year after year. The action never stops at BetMGM. Sign up now using bonus code BERRY and your first wager is risk-free up to $1,000. Simply download the BetMGM app today or go to BetMGM.com and enter bonus code BERRY to make your first wager risk-free. Again, up to $1,000. All right, time for last call. Let's get into it. The blockbuster. Bears hosting the Commanders. Uh... The line is Commanders minus one. America is excited America's for this excited game of football. For my commanders. I think my Commanders win the game. I do by too. The way. I do too. You know what I mean? I, I, I think they will. Uh, they'll go in there, you know, and they'll just give it just because that's what they do. They give you just enough hope. Just when you're ready, just when you're ready to, to jump off the bridge, they'll like give you a little bit there. So a couple of props for Thursday night tonight that we like at Bet MGM, right? Yeah. Um, Carson Wentz, like, hey, make Carson Wentz great again. So I'm taking the over on 218 and a half passing yards here. Look, Carson Wentz, it hasn't always been pretty, but he's top five in the NFL in passing yards and pass attempts through five games. He's had over 300 passing yards in three out of five games. He's had at least 38 pass attempts in every game this season. They can't run the ball effectively behind that offensive line. I'm going, oh, 218 is not a high bar to clear. It's very low. I'm going over Carson Wentz in the passing yards prop. I like that. Before we segue into my one, I want to show you BetMGM's most bet props tonight because mine is among them. Oh. So the most bet props at BetMGM. Brian Robinson to score the first touchdown, plus 750. Anytime touchdown for Brian Robinson, plus 180. And Curtis Samuel, the number one wide receiver in Washington these days, over four and a half receptions is minus 120. Now, a lot of love for Brian Robinson. I'm going to pile onto it. I'm going to take him anytime touchdown scorer, plus 180. I think this is just a very difficult market to price. And I think that, look, Brian Robinson is the only good thing about the Washington Commanders at the moment. He's the only positive story out of that team. And I just think in prime time, if they get close to the goal line, he's their goal line back anyway. I think they're going to go out of their way to give Brian Robinson his moments on a big stage relatively for the commanders and i think they'll get him in the end zone by the way i like the public I, you know normally don't, you normally want to fade the public yeah, but the, i like it I'm, I'm with you first off i'm in on brian robinson anytime touchdown i'm also in on over four and a half receptions for yeah. curtis Samuels. we just heard me talk about how dotson thomas they're both out and um uh and you know Diamond brown is banged up he's hit that number in terms of receptions in every game this year except the Dallas game where he had four receptions. Yeah. So the over four and a half, I really like that for Curtis Samuel. Um, and by the way, we both think 
Carson Wentz, yes, to throw a pick this yes. year. There's only five teams in the NFL that have less interceptions, uh, that have, I'm sorry, that have more interceptions than the Chicago Bears. So this yep. is a tough defense. Again, he'll Eddie, be he'll be under pressure, you know. Eddie and, Jackson back to 2018 form in the secondary for Chicago. Carson Wentz is minus, ticked up now minus 120 at Bet MGM to throw an interception, but he's done it in four or five games. And, uh, you know, you watch Carson Wentz, you want him to be great again. You know, he throws it up I for grabs. Gonna, but, you know, like, he'll make up, you're just like, ugh. He makes, he makes at least one pass, and usually multiple passes a game where you're just like, uh, yes, he'll make a oh, Patrick Mahomes pass, want. and then he'll make a Carson what Wentz pass. What just happened there? Yeah. I'm going to so, price it. Uh, I'm going to price it minus one seventy-five that we see Sam Howe this year uh, at some oh, point. Oh, interesting. I think yeah, he, maybe uh, I would make him clear favorite to be in at some point this season. I would like that. That's the interesting thing is if 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 they go away from Wentz, is it Taylor Heineke or Sam Howell? I think it's got to be Sam. It's Howell. It's got to be Sam. They Howell. know what they have in Heineke, which is he's a really good backup. Go Commanders tonight. Listen, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. It is closing time. So for Jake Croucher, I'm Matthew Berry. We'll be back tomorrow. Good luck tonight, Commanders. Let's go. Peace out. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.